written production of the recreation centers of Sun City Incorporated and is intended for the sole purpose of informing our recreation center members. Any duplication, copying, transmission, broadcast or use including electronic and social media is strictly prohibited without the prior written consent from the recreation centers of Sun City Incorporated. Thank you for watching. You guys ready? Um, yes. Folks, if we take our seats, it is nine o'clock and I'd like to call the meeting to order. Uh, uh, please stand if you can and we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of, of America, America and, and to, to the Republic, Republic for, for which it stands. One, One nation, nation under God, under God indivisible, with, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Be seated. Well, welcome to our board meeting today. Uh, I am Tom Foster, president of the 2024 Board of Directors. This regular meeting of the Rec Center of Sun City Board of Directors is audio and video recorded by the RCSC management and staff. Please be advised, there is to be no recording of this meeting by any individuals. Please take out your cell phones or electronic devices and make sure that they're on the vibrate or a silent mode. And we'll try to remind you to turn them back on when we're done this morning. Just a reminder, we do not tolerate verbal or physical abuse towards any member, any guest, any visitor, employee or staff member and violators will be asked to leave the meeting. Now I would like to introduce our timekeeper and our management personnel. Director Rick Meyer will be the timekeeper. And our management team here, I see uh, Matthew D. Lozanski. Morning. It's the general manager. Kevin McCurdy, finance support, senior leader. Um, Okay, right. he was hiding behind the speaker. <laughs> <clears throat> Mike Deermeyer, non-golf senior leader. Hello. Brian Duthu, the senior golf leader. Good morning. Debbie Giles, who is assistant to the general manager. Marsha Johnson, who is our board coordinator. Good morning. Also want to recognize uh, Alan Kleinhaus, Carla Young, Miguel Jackson, Doreen Rafferty, as our audio and visual engineers and thank the Sundial staff for setting up the room for us. I just want to take just a second here to introduce the, as you are well aware, it's election season for a lot of different elections in case you hadn't seen 9 million ads on TV lately. but. Um, so, but we have candidates for the board of directors and that those that voting will start late in November around the 25th, I believe it is, and conclude on the 10th of December. I just wanna introduce those candidates. If you would stand, please, so everyone can see you. Uh, Anna Borski. Anita? An I'm sorry, Anita. <laughs> you need your glasses. I do, yes. <laughs> Chris Nittasine. Mike Eggy, Rick Gray, John Brissett, and myself. I'm also a candidate for the election. So there are six candidates for five spots. First order of business is the roll call of the voting members. Secretary Rick Meyer, would you please call the roll? Give me a sec. President Foster. Here. Vice President McAdam. Good morning. Treasurer Borski. Good morning. I'm here. Director Ruff. Present. Director Nettesheim. Good morning, everybody. Director Keis. Good morning. Director Fimmel. Good morning. And Director Collins. Hello, everyone. All right. Uh, Mr. President, we have a quorum. Thank you. Any questions uh, uh, regarding the agenda? 
All right, there being no questions, the agenda is approved. Uh, minutes of the September 26, 2024 meeting were posted for the directors to review. Are there any uh, comments or corrections or additions to the minutes? All right, there being no corrections or additions, the minutes of the September 26, 2024 meeting are approved. Uh, Treasurer Borski, would you please make the treasurer's report? Sure. The balance of unrestricted funds as of September 30th, 2024 was 14.7 million, which includes a $2.5 million cash reserve. Restricted funds include the Preservation and Improvement Fund, PIF, and the Capital Reserve Fund. As of September 30th, 2024, PIF had a balance of 35.7 million, and the Capital Reserve Fund had a balance of 5.8 million. SIF fees collected to date in 2024 are 1.1 million. The carry forward balance, which is a component of the unrestricted funds balance, was 6.5 million as of September 30th, 2024. The corporation has generated a net operating deficit of 140.7,000 year to date, which is 988.5 thousand below budget year to date in 2024. Investment report, second quarter, 2024. RCSC's investment policy by bylaw, bylaws Article 8 is stringent in its requirements with the priority of investment objectives which are placed in this order, safety, liquidity, and yield. As of September 30th, 2024, 4.4 million cost basis of the 2.5 million of unrestricted cash reserve and other unrestricted funds have been invested in various FDIC insured treasury bills and corporate bonds. In 2024, these investments along with the unrestricted money market account have produced interest income of $183,082 with management fees of $7,938 for a net income or unrestricted fund investments of $175,145. At the end of September 2024, 4.6 million, at the end of September 2024, 4.6 million cost basis of the 5.8 million restricted capital reserve fund has been invested in FDIC treasury bills, mutual funds, and corporate bonds. Year to date, these investments have produced interest income of $254,842 with management fees of $5,724 for a net income on restricted capital reserve investments of $249,118. At the end of the third quarter of 2024, 28.8 million cost basis of the 35.7 million in the Restricted Preservation Improvement Fund has been invested in various FDIC insured treasury bills, mutual funds, and corporate bonds. Year to date, these investments have produced interest income of $1,127,609 with management fees of $51,283 for a net income on restricted fund investments of $1,076,326,000. Respectively submitted, Anita Borski, Treasurer. Does the board have any questions or concerns on the Treasurer's report? Kevin. Yeah, Director Borski, just a quick correction. That okay. should read investment report for the third quarter of oh. 2024. Thank you, Kevin. My mistake. Director Collins. A um, couple things. I thought we did away with carry forward, <laughs> didn't we? We took it out of here. It wasn't gonna be called carried forward. Director Collins, I've been reporting that um, every month this year. My plan is to stop reporting that at the end of this year. Okay, and um, we're on salary and wages. We're we're two hundred and twenty-four thousand different than la last year. Is that, is Are that we right? jumping into the management report now? Oh, did I, is, is that, am I still in the... Go ahead. 
Oh, I'm sorry, I turned the wrong page. <laughs> but, yeah, I'll wait for that. Were there any other concerns, Director Collins? Oh, I'll wait till All right. if I turn the page. All right. Uh, with, uh, assuming no other questions or additions, the Treasurer's report is filed for audit. Management report. Are there any questions or comments on the management report from the directors? Yes. Yes, Director Collins. Yes, under salary and wages, um, we're, we're way different than we were last year. Is, is all of this just due to wage increases or is it due to headcount in the departments? Director Collins, the vast majority of that is wage increases. We've increased headcount, I believe, seven positions this year. Um, and year to date, we're favorable to budget on our wages and benefits line of about 300,000. So it has gone up substantially based on the wage increases we put through at the beginning of this year, but we're comfortably under budget for wages and benefits. Thank you. Yes, Director uh, Borski. Um, I have a few questions on the management report. On page three, um, on the bottom of the page, it says customer inquiries responded to year to date 892. Uh, what are people asking about mostly? Is there a hot topic or? Uh, Director Borski, I'll be honest with you, I haven't seen a breakdown of what the submissions to the customer engagement platform are. I, I tend to look more at the in incident reports, okay. but I can certainly have our safety committee or our safety team provide a breakdown of the, uh, the customer engagement inquiries. Great, that would be helpful, yeah. thank you. Um, on page four, um, it seems like our incident reports, the biggest one is behavior slash miscellaneous. Um, two questions, what is miscellaneous? And do we have a, are we, do we have a program? Do we, are we doing something to try to reduce this? Miscellaneous is just the catch all for everything else. So we, we have a, a variety of items in there. And as far as what we're doing about it, the message that uh, President Foster read is also up on signs everywhere around here to help remind people that you know we're still supposedly a civil society and that we are going to not tolerate, as, this, as the message is, terrible behavior. So we have been uh, diligent in trying to bring that to people's attention and help them understand that you can't just take out whatever you are feeling on our employees or on other members or anybody else for that matter. And there's a, an active training of our people to not just, you know, let that abuse continue so that we are taking steps to check it when it occurs. Okay, are we coming up with any um, uh, private conversations with, with people? Are we? Many private conversations Many. with okay. people. Yes. Okay. It's part of our overall investigation of okay. things that rise to the level of being an incident. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm not done, hang on. <laughs> do you have something on that? No, uh, yes I do. Okay. <clears throat> um, how, do, how do the behavior incidents and the trespasses compare this year to previous years? Do we know? I don't have the exact numbers in, in front of me. We have looked at that. And because of what I just said, we are seeing more things written up that weren't written up in the past. Our, especially a lot of our custodian staff were dealing with issues that should have never been dealt with without an incident report, uh, things occurring in restrooms and the way things are left. Uh, the the uh, people that are checking people in, they are now more aware that they need to acknowledge when something is going awry and, and document it so that we have the ability to track better what's going on rather than just ignore it. Okay. Okay.
Okay, I'm you can continue. <clears throat> Thank you. Mr. President, I'm along, Go ahead, uh, along the same line, um, are, are, are many or more of these incidents involved in uh, clubs uh, with one club member uh, perhaps not in compliance or finding non-compliance with club rules and member-to-member -member issues? Director Fimmel, those types of incidents are generally dealt with by the club's office. Uh, there, there's a there's a process within the club's office to deal with uh, issues that occur within club spaces. Um, quite frankly, a lot of this has to do with politics this year, with disagreements um, between members of rival political parties, and those turn into. Uh, verbal and on a very rare occasion, physical altercations between members. Okay, on page five, uh, turnover rates. Our turnover was, um, let's see, 23, in 2023 was 36% and in 2024 it's 31%. Have we, uh, do we have a retention program now and do we do exit interviews as to why people are leaving? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Director Borski, we, we track, um, we try to have an exit interview with everybody who resigns, and we track um, under various reason codes within our HR system why individuals are leaving. And broadly, we, we kind of break those into what we call controllable versus non-controllable. Non-controllable are things like somebody retires or somebody leaves because of a medical issue. That's, that's outside of our control regarding retention, but things like somebody leaving for better pay elsewhere or somebody leaving because they don't get along with their boss, we consider that controllable. And so those are the ones that we really focus on. Our biggest, um, our biggest attempt to impact that in a positive way was obviously the wage adjustments that we've put forward in the last couple of years. And we're seeing, you know, a pretty, reasonable decrease in that controllable um, um, turnover based on things like people leaving for better wages elsewhere. Okay, great. Uh, one more, page seven under communications. Um, I gotta find it. Our, the last item uh, where it says 17 e email blast percent it says our open rate has gone up 16% and our click rate has gone up 20%. 16% um, up from where? Were we at 20% and we went to 36 or were we yeah. at the last item, Mike, and under communications? Yeah, it's from the previous month. It's compared against the previous month. Okay, but what is our total click rate? I'd have to get that number for you. I don't okay. have it off the top of my head. I think it was around 6,000 on one of them. Okay. Um, page 10, the softball field. Uh, not a question, but a pat on the back. Uh, that turned out to be an exceptional facility. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd really like to uh, acknowledge and thank everybody that was working on that because it is gorgeous. Um, wonderful job. And when we, uh, for the grand opening, when the board played, uh, it, I think it was the most fun we've had in a long, long time. We actually laughed and had a good time. And people liked it, that was nice. And on page 11, um, second comment from the bottom, underperformers. Um, I'm looking at our merchandise. Um, are, is this just a sign of the times, inflation? Are we trying, do we have the wrong merchandise? Do we need to change things? Director Borski, um, it's certainly a possibility that uh, inflation is part of it, but we, we're also down year to date in rounds about 7,000. And in a lot of those rounds are public rounds and they tend to be the ones that do a lot of impulse buying. Okay. Um, so that's having a direct impact on merchandise sales as well. It's okay. Do we, have a, do we have a, um, a variety of merchandise we flip from year to year to year, or are we doing the same thing over and over? Uh, 
Typically, we um, turn over our uh, clothing um, year to year. Um, we bring most of the clothing into Riverview uh, for sale so that people know where to go to look. Um, the stuff that doesn't move, we send to Willow Creek and we and put it on sale at Willow Creek as a clearinghouse um, okay. per se. The rest of the items are more um, golf specific, golf balls and hats and tees and that type of stuff. So that's pretty consistent year to year. Can we jump okay. in that? Since Willow Creek is one of our most popular courses and we have a lot of outside play there, does it make a lot of sense to put the the inventory that people aren't buying there as opposed to putting it in other courses? It seems to me if you've got a lot of outside play at Willow Creek, which we do, you would want to put the stuff that would that would be attractive to impulse buyers instead of the rejects that nobody else has wanted. We can certainly look at that, but the, the rounds of rounds at Riverview are pretty high from, mm -hmm. from an outside standpoint also. So. Yes, that's true. Okay, thank you, that's all I have. Mr. President. Director Fimmel. I'd like to go back to a prior comment about uh, politics, and I don't wanna talk about politics, but I do want to ask the question if we have a club's policy about, uh, for example, uh, clothing or paraphernalia uh, within clubs uh, that perhaps we shouldn't have political apparel when we're doing our club activities. Has anybody given that some thought? Director Fimmel, I'm not sure about the, the rules that are club specific, but as far as the facilities, you know, obviously First Amendment, you can wear a t-shirt with, you know, your favorite candidate, but we do have a policy against any kind of um, vulgar um, writing words on t-shirts or apparel. And that's about as far as we can take that because I don't believe that we can just outright ban um, you know, people from wearing a T-shirt with a particular party or candidate on it. Uh, I don't disagree with that, but that leaves people who are not wearing that paraphernalia subject to those who are. Mm -hmm. Just an observation. Mm -hmm. Any other comments on the uh, management Mr. report? Mr. Oh, Director Collins. Yes, um, one question on the incident reports. Does this number get reported to our insurance company? Uh, Director Collins, no, it is not. They've never requested that. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? Okay, seeing that there are no further discussions there, the management report is accepted. Do the directors have any committee or liaison reports today? Director Borski. Um, I am the uh, liaison for the Sun City Museum and uh, they are looking for docents. They've had to reduce their hours of operation because they don't have enough uh, docents to be in the office. So if you're interested, they have a great training program. Uh, they're a bunch of fun people and just give them a contact. They are on uh, Coggins Avenue just past Oakmont, it's the first house past Oakmont. And, and a docent is? A docent, a docent is the person that gives tours at the museum or answers questions about the history of Sun City. Um, very informative, um, if, if that's your thing, please give them a call or go visit them. Thank you. Others? <laughs> Connie? Uh, Director Rick Myers, it's okay. excuse me. Connie's okay. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to remind everybody that the um, U.S. Open of Lawn Bowling will start this Friday and run until, run all of next week and I believe end the following Sunday. So all of our different lawn bowling greens, um, the opening ceremonies will be at Lakeview. Uh, please find some time to attend. These are nationally ranked and in some cases internationally ranked lawn bowlers. And I know you guys are going like lawn bowling. Uh -huh. Lawn bowling is really cool. It is like a cross between pool bowling, um, curling if you're from the Midwest where you know that sport. It is phenomenal, it's very strategic, and I think you guys would find it interesting and they are also always looking for members. Thank you. Director Nivisign. 
Hello, everybody. I'm uh, the chair of the Outreach and Communication Committee and the co-chair of the Technology Committee. And I wanted to share, we talked at the exchange about the new website and that we were going to um, have committees working together to ensure that the rollout of the new website followed good change management practices and we had training in place. The two committees are gonna start collaborating together starting um, November. Um, so both committees will be meeting for the technology committee, two meetings they have, and the outreach and communication meeting they have. Um, I just wanted to give everybody a heads up because that is going to be the primary focus of those two committees through um, January. You're welcome to come listen to what we're talking about and how we're wanting to um, help implement the new website successfully and make sure everybody has all the knowledge they need to do that. So I just wanted to share that with everybody. Thank you. Any others? Director Collins. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, one thing, we had an issue with some of the electronic signage boards at the rec centers, at the clubs. They're, they're getting old and they're having glitches more and more frequently. Um, we think we worked through it a little bit. We're gonna have to do some repairs or new ones or something in the future. So if, if we can't get some of the club's issues up there, you know, uh, bear with management because a lot of it is due to um, problems with the equipment getting old. Thank you. I'm familiar with getting old, uh, <laughs> Director Collins. Uh, and uh, I do want to mention that I want to thank you so much for that softball extravaganza because my hamstrings have yet to recover. Um, oh, by the way, I did tell them we wanted a rematch next year. Oh, no, 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 no. Let's not do that. That was so thoughtful of you. All right. Um, General Manager Report. Thank you. Well, greetings, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here, and a big howdy to all of those who watch this on the internet or via our website. Well, the cooler weather is here, and even more is to come. So as usual, here are a few things that you may find of interest. Concerning the Mountain View and Performing Arts Center project, a planning session will follow this board meeting. And during that planning session, our architects and engineers firm, Triarch, will be here to give a brief presentation with an overview of the Performing Arts Center location selection process. So that is the focus of this, is the location selection process, followed by their final recommendation for the PAC with their supporting rationale. Second, uh, budget work is concluded and recommendations have been given to the board. Thanks to all the hard work from the team, the committees, the clubs and centers, golf, the facilities and finance folks, thanks for making this the most robust and transparent budget process ever. Thank you, thank you all. There were a lot of participation from our membership as well through all those committees and just people that had attended. So we look forward to doing this again, starting probably in January, because it's a ever, never ending process, the budget. Earlier this month, the Oakmont pool was completed in time for the water volleyball tournament and the new Sun Bowl facilities had their grand opening as we were just hearing about the, the fun baseball game. Both events were a success with good turnout and a lot of fun for everyone that participated. Punch card sales have resumed and the sales are going well. The other item is the library lease that's always of a question of concern. It was signed by the RCSC in the beginning of September, as we've uh, said since then. And this week we responded to the Maricopa County Library District questions and gave them the, the responses they were looking for and now we're waiting on them to complete and send us back the fully executed lease. We still have a couple of full months before that would be even an issue so I am fully expecting that to be done probably before Thanksgiving the way things sounded this week. The fairway entrance project has been completed 
Thanks for your patience. There were some delays with the uh, countertop. It's being well received and it offers a much better view of the entry doors. The Arts and Crafts Festival is all set for, for the Friday and Saturday after Thanksgiving. That's November 29th and 30th. Special event insurance, Maricopa County Sheriff's, Sheriff's Office security are in place and golf carts have been reserved. The Sundial concert season tickets, the season ticket sales end tomorrow. So if you wanna get your season tickets, you've got until the end of the day tomorrow. And then on Monday, we'll start the individual ticket sales. So that's on Monday the 4th. There's a 12 show lineup. You can see it out in the flyers, but it's really outstanding. The enthusiasm in just buying the tickets so far is very high. It should be a great season. And lastly, the Viewpoint Lake had its last two larger and lighted fountains installed, or there might be one left to install, but they should all be done probably by the end of this week, for sure, the beginning. So we will have all four new large lighted fountains up and running. And if you haven't been out there in the dark, it is spectacular. They look good during the day, but they are just fantastic at night. And next week, I know a lot of people have asked me about this, the sport fish will be stocked. So the lake will be back to uh, somewhat normal with uh, all the fountains going and the fish in there. So as usual, there's an awful lot going on around here and there's much to choose from. So thank you very much. Thank you, uh, General Manager DeLance D. Luzanski. I need more coffee today. Um, um, okay, any other questions or concerns on that? All right. Um, next, I have a, a brief comment on the President's comment section here. There was a, um, I, I guess, a misunderstanding that was published in the Independent related to the annual, the, the history of increases in annual assessments. And I know there was some confusions there because during the, the, the town halls that we, we did on the, the budget itself, there, there were a couple slides showing no increases, but that was really related to golf. And uh, so I think there was some confusion there between annual assessments and, and the golf uh, increases. My understanding is that has been corrected and that a, a, re, a corrected article has been published. So if there's any further concerns about that, uh, let us know. But I believe all of that has been successfully addressed and corrected. All right, <clears throat> any announcements from the directors that we have not already touched on? Excellent. All right, first item of business is consent, uh, uh, consent agenda. Uh, we have a request to change the name of the Zumba Club to the Step to the Music Club per club request. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? I'll make a motion. Director Collins. Okay. I, moved. There, I is, moved. All right. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Director Nettishein. <laughs> all right. Uh, is there any discussion by the directors? Hearing none, Secretary Richmar, will you please take the roll call vote? Treasurer Borski? Yes. Director Keis? Yes. Director Collins? Yes. Vice President McAdam? Yes. Director Ruff? Yes. Director Fimmel? Yes. Director Nettesheim? Yes. President Foster? Yes. And I vote yes with a score of nine to zero. Motion passes. Excellent. Next item of business is a motion on behalf of the Finance, Budget, and Audit Committee. Um, Vice President McAdam, as chair of that committee, would you like to speak to that motion? Shall I read it first? Yes, you may. Okay, so the motion is um, on behalf of finance, budget, and audit. Uh, I move that the 2025 operating and capital budget be approved as recommended by the finance, budget, and audit committee. 
Um, <clears throat> we do not need a second on that. So if you want to go ahead and speak to that, go right ahead. Sure. Um, so the budget that's being recommended by the Finance Budget and Audit Committee for board approval today, the first vote of two, is the result of hundreds of hours of input and deliberation by multiple teams, including quite a few members who serve on our standing committees. Um, I probably won't hit them all, but it, this includes finance and budget, long-range planning, clubs, golf advisory, the five-year team. Most of these meetings have been open to the membership and meeting summaries posted online. And as has been mentioned already, the rollout culminated in two town halls held last week when the budget being voted on today was presented in full to the membership and posted to our website. The 2025 budget is not being presented in isolation either, as it is embedded in a larger five-year plan, which I think may be a first here. So finance budget and audit recommends this budget to the board today with a high degree of confidence that it is realistic and conservative and places RCSC on stable footing as we move forward. Thank you. Ms. Johnson, do you, can you please read names of those who have signed up to speak to this motion? Richie Miller. No? Okay. Dave Clausen. Good morning. <clears throat> I, I have, uh, oh, name, Dave Clausen, 154961. <laughs> okay, it's good to be back. Uh, lots of things. I came in here a few minutes early to see what I wanted to speak on, and, and there were so many papers uh, out that I, um, so I signed the first one because I wanted to say something. But basically, I am pleased to see progress overall. Um, and the five-year business plan and the budget, I did listen to, watch the whole thing uh, on the Zoom and those Zoom meetings of our board meetings and exchange meetings are very useful and I, I really appreciate that and I would uh, like to have that continue. Now as far as the five-year plan, that's a wonderful thing to do. I'm not clear as to the budget, the, the, uh, <clears throat> the vote to approve, if that's approving the business plan, the five-year plan, or is it just approving 2025 budget out of that plan? So that that's, needs to be clarified in my mind. Um, I just, uh, I, I enjoyed, I participated in that softball celebration, and uh, I was at third base when you, I think you, Tom, you hit a, a good hit. Was it a triple? It was. It was. So that's where you probably pulled your hamstring. Yeah, round and second, it should have yeah. slowed down. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Dave, I think they became a triple because you committed an error. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Uh-uh. <laughs> uh, in fact, uh, as you made it sound as if a rematch is required because you didn't win, but you actually won that game. It was an incredibly long uh, uh, high scoring game. I don't remember the score, but 20 something to 20 something. I think we were allowed to win. A lot of people didn't create outs on the other side just to, to make us feel <laughs> it, better. It wasn't quite, you know, we tried to win the last uh, couple innings, but you were ahead. Well, anyway, uh, enough of that. I, I do like step by step, day by day, a little bit better in every way. And on my honor, I think this is what we want to do is to do our best, to be honest, and all we do. And I applaud all of you for all, all the hard work and management. It's all good. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, everyone who signed up has spoken. Wow. Do you okay. Do you want to speak to that? No. Um, Dave, to answer your question, we're just voting on the annual budget here. We're not doing anything with a five-year plan at this time. In this motion. Okay. Um, are there any comments or 
concerns from the directors with regard to this motion. Okay. Uh, the motion before us then is uh, from the Finance Budget and Audit Committee to approve the 2025 operating capital budget. Um, Secretary Rickmeyer, would you please take the roll call vote? Director Collins? Yes. Director Fimmel? Yes. Director Nettesheim? Yes. Vice President McAdam? Yes. Director Ruff? Yes. Treasurer Borski? Yes. Director Keis? Yes. President Foster? Yes. And I vote yes with a vote of nine to zero. The motion passes. So that is the first reading on the budget. The second reading would take place at the November uh, board meeting. Okay, next item of business is a motion on behalf of the club organization committee to amend board policy number 12. This was previously postponed at the September meeting so that we could do some further review. It is now being brought back for discussion at this meeting. Uh, Director Collins, do you wish to read your motion? I'll read the, just the title. Uh, on behalf of the Club Organizations Committee, COC, I move to amend board policy number 12. As this is coming from the committee, we do not need a second for that motion. Do you wish to make any further comments uh, as the maker of the motion, Director Collins? Yes, thank you. Well, the COC has been working on this for two years, and we finally have something that we could bring forward. Uh, we, we, we have a lot of things that we wanted to have addressed at club level. We don't want to be enforcers or make rules for you. We want the clubs to make their own rules and to um, go forward with the rules. So this here is uh, what I feel is our best we could do on this, to give them self-governance and uh, make it fair for everyone in the clubs. So. Thank you very much. Ms. Johnson, will you please read those, the names of those who have requested to speak on this motion? Mr. President, no one signed up to speak on this motion. Okay. Uh, so, yes. Um, speaking for the COC, uh, we did have a meeting with club presidents um, three or four weeks ago. And all of their input that, that they wanted, that uh, they thought was important to them, we did put into this policy paper. So we've had input from a lot of our membership. I recall that. Thank you mm -hmm. very much for doing that. Uh, Director Keis. Yeah, I'm in agreement with everything people have said on this. The one thing I don't agree with that happened at the meeting with the clubs was the uh, the requirement to have two club monitors and clubs using tools and equipment that could cause injury. My memory of the meeting is that the, a lot of the people in the clubs were, were okay with one monitor and a, and a club member doing it. So I, uh, I have a lot of beef with that portion of the policy. Director Collins, would you like to address that? Yes, we did, we did address that. Um, if your club has certain, if you look at safety, it says what items we considered to be dangerous, and those are the ones that would require two monitors. The rest could be, a, if you look at monitors, it could be a person assigned as a monitor while the other is a member for other clubs that didn't have all the dangerous equipment. We did do that, and we also put it, there was issue of when a guy goes in to open a club, he's by himself. So the final thing is uh, the club will, will put in their template how they will open a club, how they will come in maybe to empty the kiln and then fill the kiln and then leave with only one person in there. They will put it in there how they will do it, whether they will make a phone call to someone to say I'm going in and in 20 minutes they will leave and say we have now left the club. So I tried to provide ways for them to do some of the 
things by, even by themselves that they need to do. The guy goes in to make coffee, open the door, and you know he has 20 minutes to a half hour to to get the next person to come in. So they have two people because we want to have two people in the clubs because of our age group. Basically, we can have medical illness, and we need someone there that might need to call 911. Thank you. Does that direct? answer your response or concerns uh, Dr. not really I understand all that you're saying on that and I agree completely that we need to have two people in the clubs at all times uh, I just don't see how having two monitors there instead of a person and a club member gives us any extra safety I'm all for safety and making sure that we keep our members safe but I just think two club monitors when clubs have said they've had problems Getting people to sign up and be monitors, um, I think that just makes it more difficult for our clubs. Well, the one issue that happened was in a club, we had a monitor and a club member. And that was the way it ran for many, many years. And then on a Saturday, one of the monitor and the member were there. The, the member left, never said anything to the monitor. The monitor went back in the back of the shop fell down, it was a Saturday afternoon, and luckily someone came in at quarter to four and found him laying on the floor because he couldn't get up or he would have laid there till Monday. That was why we changed it to two monitors because then it just, it makes them, if you're a monitor and you sign in as a monitor, you're not gonna leave without the other monitor. Where members had, they just didn't have the responsibility and they would they would leave that was the reason for that yeah and i can understand that but that was also we didn't have a rule at that time that there had to always be two people in the clubs now yeah. in the writing that's in here it says that you have to have at least two people in there so when one person leaves clubs have to understand that okay we have to have two people there so if the one person leaves then the club has to be shut down for the time so okay that's okay. Okay. Is okay. that your understanding uh, or the way you would implement that, uh, Director Collins, that if we're one leaves? We're not supposed to operate without two people, mm -hmm. but okay. to try and keep that as every time that there's going to be two people is tough. With, it, it, with dangerous equipment or areas where you can not be, have a light of sight is where basically where this comes into play with the two monitors. But I understand what you're saying. And if we can come up with better wording, we will do something in the future. Okay. Is there any other discussion from the directors? Director Rick Meyer. Okay, uh, I belong to a small club, the China Painters over at Oakmont. And we have typically had one monitor. We don't really have much that would be considered hazardous. You know, opening a kiln if you don't lock it could be an issue. Um, we have already implemented many of these things. Like if someone shows up early, they let people know, hey, I'm opening up today, blah, blah, blah. When, when we take turns to go on Saturdays to take care of the kiln, Kathy, our president, I'm gonna take care of the kiln this morning, um, be there at nine o'clock. Kathy, I'm finished when I'm done, I'm leaving at 920. So it's documented, um, I think, I think we need to try this. We need to see how this works for the clubs that have dangerous items. Um, we're not trying in any matter. I know that the COC worked extremely hard. They are not trying in any matter to tell people exactly what to do. What they're trying to do is ensure safety for all of our members. Is it perfect? No, but it's a heck of a lot better than the, the limited guidelines that we had before. And when you put on, on top of it the wonderful template that has been created and how each club can use that template and tailor rules that work for their club, it's, it seems like it's a really good opportunity that we need to, to push forward. So Director Collins was what Director Rick Meyer just described consistent with your proposal. Yes, it is, and, and we, like there's nothing that we said, you'll have two monitors and this is what they will do. You can say one monitor is the desk monitor, the other monitor can be back working on his little project. That's up to, completely gonna be up to the clubs. Okay, any, any other comments from the directors? 
All right. Um, uh, Secretary Rickmeyer, would you please read the roll call vote? Director Collins? Yes. Director Foster, pardon me, President Foster? Yes. Director Nettesheim? Yes. Vice President McAdam? Yes. Director Ruff? Yes. Treasurer Borski? Yes. Director Keis? No. Director Fimmel? Yes. And I vote yes with a vote of eight to one. Passes the first reading? It's, that is the first reading. Okay. So again, this will come back in the November meeting for the second reading. All right, our next item of business is a motion by Director Ruff to amend uh, board policy three uh, entitled corporate records. Uh, Director Ruff, would you like to proceed? Uh, the motion is uh, to amend board policy three titled corporate records as follows, and it's uh, fairly simple, but um, we had some issues to discuss, and so I move to postpone to next meeting. Is there a second to postpone this? I second. Uh, any discussion from the directors? Director Rickmeyer, would you take the vote to uh, postpone this item? Okay. Treasurer Borski? Yes. <clears throat> Director Keis? Yes. Director Collins? Yes. Vice President McAdam? Yes. Director Ruff? Yes. Director Fimmel? Yes. Director Nettesheim? Yes. President Foster? Yes. And I vote yes, 9-0. All right. Next item of business uh, is a motion by Director Ruff to amend Board Policy 21, entitled Membership Documentation Requirements. Would you proceed, Director Ruff? Uh, I move to amend Board Policy 21, titled Membership Documentation Requirements, Section C, as follows. And we have some issues amongst ourselves on that, so we're going to move to postpone to the next meeting. And for those who are interested, we're discussing the living within 75 miles, the 14 guests, and the, the 75 miles and occupancy issues to be consistent with, between bylaws and policies. We would need a second for that motion to postpone. A second. Right, any discussion from the directors? Seeing none, Secretary Rickmeyer, will you take the vote? Treasurer Borski? Yes. Director Keis? Yes. Director Collins? Yes. Vice President McAdam? Yes. Director Ruff? Yes. President Foster? Yes. Director Nettesheim? Yes. Director Fimmel? Yes. And I vote no. Eight to one. All right. So we have postponed that for the time being. Next item of business is a motion again by Director Ruff to amend the bylaws. The motion was I move to amend the bylaws as follows and is quite extensive. Um, we still have the same issue to deal with and get consensus around the 75 mile rule, the 14 days and uh, occupancy to be consistent between the bylaws and all of the, the rules that include those things. So I move to postpone to the next meeting. We would need a second for that as well. I second. Director Nettishan. Any discussion from the directors? Seeing none, Director Rickmeyer, would you take the vote? Uh, Treasurer Borski? Yes. Director Keis? Yes. Director Collins? Yes. Vice President McAdam? Yes. Director Ruff? Yes. President Foster? Yes. Director Nettesheim? Yes. Director Fimmel? Yes. And I vote yes, so 9-0. All right. Our, our next uh, item is uh, a second reading of a motion on behalf of the Long Run Planning Committee recommending dealing with the Sun City Foundation. Uh, Director Keis, would you proceed with your motion? 
I moved based on the Long Range Planning Committee's recommendation that in addition to providing critical assistance to RCSC members, the Sun City Foundation be tasked to broaden their goals to work within its full capacity to obtain grants, gifts, and bequests to aid in the building of additional RCSC funding streams. Uh, no second is needed here. Did you wish to speak further on this motion? I do. Um, the Long Range Planning Committee is making this recommendation to the board for the board to vote on it because we recognize that it is a board decision on, um, on what happens with the foundation per the bylaws. Um, we think that uh, it is essential for us to be able to identify outside funds um, to help us with projects we have coming up in the long range, in, in long range planning. Um, and the foundation is the only vehicle we have to do that now. So this is just a recommendation from, the, uh, from LRP to uh, ask the board to move forward to find other funding streams through the foundation. Ms. Johnson, would you read the names of those who have signed up to speak to this motion? Mr. President, no one signed up to speak on this motion. Okay. So the motion, bef is there any discussion by the directors? Okay, seeing none. Uh, I have a question. I mean, I, I pretty much know the answer, but I think it just would enhance people's understanding. Uh, Director Keis, um, with regards to this motion, this, it's not only funds for future projects for RCSC, but it's also potential future funds to make things easier for members, more handicap accessible, more, you know, it's like extra resources that don't have to come out of the pockets of our members, correct? Yes, that's true. Okay, just wanted to confirm that. Mr. President. Director Ruff. I'd, I'd also like to note that uh, we ran this by our attorney before we moved forward in any way to look at do we use the existing foundation or do we set up a separate organization to do this? And his advice was to um, use the, the foundation that we have that the way that the Articles of Incorporation and their bylaws are written, it allows us to do that. And that's why we've gone through the process we did to uh, address that issue. Thank you. I guess I would add that I have been a bit on the forefront of, of these issues. Um, I don't know how many people have thanked the um, independent for putting that large picture of me on the front page because it tended to fit their dartboards just exactly right. Um, but uh, I, I certainly agree with the concept that long range planning is trying to propose here, but I also felt like we already had, or the board already had documents allowing it to do what we did at the last meeting when we talked about um, how the foundation was structured and the um, legal opinions that we had received telling us this is how it should operate. So I'm, I'm not disagreeing with necessarily this motion, but not fully comfortable with, with how it fits in here. So um, Anyway, that's just my comment on that. Are there any other concerns or comments by direct? Yes, Vice President McAdam. Yeah, I think I would just like to point out that I'm very thankful that long range planning is actually putting this forward just to create clarity, even though you may find some redundancy in that. Um, because it's been an issue in other committees as well, the, um, the ad hoc committee, the strategic alternatives committee that met for a good chunk of last year actually also saw this as a critical piece. Finance and budget has had discussions about this. and. Just to be perfectly clear about this, we're not eliminating anything that the foundation currently does. All the fine work that the, uh, that the foundation has done will continue. We are simply expanding the scope of it to um, allow for the uh, 
um, for monies to be donated both for helping for the charitable purpose of helping people who need assistance with paying their annual assessment and for receipt of other gifts for people who wish to give for other reasons. Uh, people are completely um, able to determine where they make their own gifts. This is a tax-deductible charity. It's or a organiz charitable organization. It's a 501c3. Our CSC is a 501c4. You can donate money to us, but it doesn't help you tax-wise at all. So this is simply any donations going into the foundation are tax-relevant for folks, for corporations, for vendors who wish to support um, our CSC, whatever it might be. Thank you. Uh Vice President McAdam, I think that was a very helpful clarification. Any other comments by the directors? Director Keis? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to get some background information on this also. Long Range Planning was completely aware of, of what the board is trying to do moving forward. Our, one of the big emphasis items on us doing this was to, to let people and the board know that, that the Long Range Planning is fully behind um, the board's decisions to help expand the foundation's use and wanted to let the board know that that, uh, that the, the committee is, is fully behind their efforts to do that and support what they're trying to do. Thank you. Any others? All right, seeing none, um, Director Richmeyer, will you please take the roll call vote? Director Collins? Yes. President Foster? I think I will abstain at this time. Okay. Uh, Director Nettesheim? Yes. Vice President McAdam? Yes. Director Ruff? Yes. Treasurer Borski? Uh, yes. Okay. Director Keis? Yes. Director Fimmel? Yes. And I vote yes, so with a vote eight to one, passes. Right, um, that is the second reading, so the motion is adopted. Next item of business is the second reading on a motion by Director Ruff to amend board policy two, uh, entitled Senior Management. Director Ruff. I move to amend board policy two, titled Senior Management as follows. It deletes paragraph A1 uh, and then makes a couple modifications. It's a simple, um, change and it is reflecting the change in uh, employee names instead of being directors they are uh, senior management do you need to make any further comments as maker of the motion uh, I think it's a straightforward thing and we it's ready to go Ms. Johnson, could you please read the names of any members who have signed up to speak on this? Mr. President, no one signed up to speak on this motion. We're just not very attractive today, <laughs> yes. Um, all right, any discussion from the directors? Makes sense. Okay. Motion before you is to amend BP2. Um, Secretary Rickmeyer, would you please take the roll call vote? Treasurer Borski? Yes. Director Keis? Yes. Director Collins? Yes. Vice President McAdam? Yes. Director Ruff? Yes. President Foster? Yes. Director Nettesheim? Yes. Director Fimmel? Yes. And I vote yes, nine to zero. All right, that is, I believe, the first reading for that. That's no, the second. second. Uh, sorry. Even says that. No, it does not. But that's okay. it does. Well. Okay. You got it. Second reading. Thank you. Next item of business is the second reading on a motion by Director Ruff to adopt Board Policy Four regarding Robert's Rules of Order. Director Ruff. Uh, after discussion with the other board members, I'm going to move to table this um, and maybe address next year or maybe not. Okay. Do we need a second on that? Yes. Yes, we do. 
Second. Director Collins seconds the, the motion to table. Any discussion by directors? Um, the, most of the members didn't feel like it was needed and that they had access to the information they needed to comply with Robert's Rules of Voters during our meeting, and therefore I moved to table it. Do we need to allow any vote or member comment on this? No. Uh, not for a move to table. Okay. Though. Then, then Secretary Rickmeyer, will you please take the vote to table this motion? Sure. Uh, Treasurer Borski? Yes. Director Keis? Yes. Director Collins? Yes. Vice President McAdam? Yes. Director Ruff? Yes. President Foster? Yes. Director Nedesheim? Yes. Director Fimmel? Yes. And I vote yes. Nine to zero. Tabled. All right, so we have tabled that one for the time being. Next item of business is second reading of a motion, again by Director Ruff, to amend board policy six on corporate privacy policy. Would you please proceed? I move to amend board policy number six, titled Corporate Privacy Policy, as follows. It's a simple uh, change to add the Sun City Foundation uh, under the organizations that perform a recognized beneficial service to the owners and card holders of Sun City. Um, simple, straightforward. Do we, uh, this was a, uh, we need no second on this one. Second reading. Yes, I see that. Um, do you need to make any other comments on um, this as maker of the motion? As a maker of the motion, uh, this was a request from the foundation to be added to this uh, corporate privacy policy, and it made perfect sense to me. Okay. Ms. Johnson, did any member sign up to speak on this particular motion? Mr. President, no one signed up to speak on this motion. Okay. Um, is there any discussion by the directors? Seems pretty straightforward. Uh, go ahead. Okay. Uh, um, as the vice president of the foundation, we uh, requested this uh, simply because it will allow us to um, get some information from the cardholder office that will help us locate some of our uh, low-income uh, members who are having some difficulties paying their annual assessment. Um, this way we, we have another um, another route that we can find names rather than sometimes waiting for people to show up. We can be proactive. Any other comments from the directors? All right. Seeing none, Secretary Rick Meyer, will you please take the roll call vote? Treasurer Borski? Yes. Director Keis? Yes. Director Collins? Yes. Vice President McAdam? Yes. Director Ruff? Yes. Director Fimmel? Yes. Director Nedesheim? Yes. President Foster? Yes. And I vote yes. Vote nine to zero. All right. Motion passes. That motion passes. Next item of business is a second reading of a motion by Director Ruff to amend board policy 20 related to the Sun City Foundation. Director Ruff. I move to amend board policy 20 titled Sun City Foundation as follows. There's a significant number of changes in it and the primary uh, change is um, one that establishes or agrees with bylaws for uh, Sun City Foundation and uh, is a proposed change in our um, bylaws. The, at the first executive session on the first business day after January 1, we have a new board. They meet on January 2nd, unless it's a Saturday or Sunday. And we appoint officers for our board and vote on it. But we also, at that point, name the directors of the Sun City Foundation. Every dir director of the Sun City Foundation is serving a one-year term. So they have to be approved for that second year or third year or however many 
or a new one, or they can be removed. And per the bylaws, the board of the RCSC has the authority to remove for any reason or no reason whatever uh, board, board uh, members of the Sun City Foundation. So we've appointed some new uh, members recently and they have what they need to move forward. But this documents the changes within our policy to uh, how we're gonna do those things. Thank you, Director Ruff. Ms. Johnson, please read the names of those who may have signed up to speak on this motion. Lois Hansen. You don't want to? Okay. Pam Black. I just would like to clarify, oh, Pam Black. 171396. Uh, I would just like clarification on section one, uh, number D, in terms of, is this a brand new uh, part of this? Because uh, I, it's just, so the, the, the directors are appointed and elected by the RCSC Board of Directors. That's not new, is that correct? That is correct. Okay, thank you. Mr. President, yes. everyone spoke who signed up for this motion. Thank you. <clears throat> Discussion from the directors. Director Rickmeyer. Okay, uh, Director Ruff, it's just clarification, right? Because it was a little, if I remember correctly, a little ambiguous. It said the board, and we. And this clarifies by saying the directors of the foundation are elected by the RC, uh, SC board of directors and shall be removed by. So that, that was more or less to clarify. That's why it's, it was said the same, it just wasn't as clear. Correct. Okay. Director Borski. Right, and uh, this came out of our um, legal opinion that we had. Um, it, it was very um, confusing. We spoke of the board and we spoke of the board, but we didn't know which board was which board. So um, based on his recommendation, this is the reason we've clarified what's saying here. Nothing has really changed, it's just clarified. Okay. Any other comments? All right. Uh, Secretary Rickmeyer, will you please take the roll call vote? Okay. Treasurer Borski? Yes. Director Kais? Yes. Director Collins? Yes. Vice President McAdam? Yes. Director Ruff? Yes. Director Fimmel? Yes. Director Nettesheim? Yes. President Foster? Yes. And I vote yes, nine to zero. And this was a second reading, yes. so we're, we this passes then. Thank you. Next item of business is a second reading, uh, again by Director Ruff, to amend board policy 32, entitled General Manager. Director Ruff. Uh, I, I move to amend board policy 32, titled General Manager. There's a significant number of changes, but they're all pretty basic. The um, changes to uh, document how we are going to work with uh, uh, the general manager and that we're talking with each other and going through details of different things on a regular basis. Uh, it's, uh, we think it's gonna be a wonderful improvement for our, it has already been because we're already working under that process. And we really appreciate the general manager's work and all that he does and, and uh, we had a, a good, really good meeting yesterday prior to this, just talking about what's going on in the next month or two. Thank you. Okay, so this is a second reading, so we do not need a second. Ms. Johnson, did anyone sign up to speak to this? Pam Black. Mr. President, no one signed up. Right, thank you. Directors, any comments, questions, concerns from the directors? 
seeing none. Well, actually, Whoops. Just, oh, so Vice I, President McAdam. Yeah, I just would like to say something. I was um, unable to attend the exchange meeting last week because I was out of town, but um, I've had a chance to review that, and I see that during that meeting there were some questions that were asked about the board um, interaction with our general manager. And, uh, an insinuation, I thought, unfortunate was made that we don't have access to the general manager. Our general manager does have an open door policy. The board office is located directly adjacent to his office, and I can't begin to tell you the number of times when there's just um, walking back and forth, and the general manager always responds positively when we ask to engage in a conversation with him. Sometimes he comes in and joins us uh, informally in the board office as well. I just thought it was important to put that out there. Um, the general manager has also offered to be available to any of the board candidates who want to come in and have a chance to sit down and talk with him um, prior to election. So just putting that out there as well, and uh, I want to assure you that there is very much an open door policy there. Thank you for volunteering the general manager. I'm sure he appreciates that. Um, Mr. President? Yes, Director Finley. I would also identify that there are at least four contact points a month between leadership uh, and the board at large, between the, those offices and the general manager. Thank you. I, and I, uh, Vice President McAdam, I do recall that exchange discussion during the exchange that you referenced as a insinuation that we weren't having enough contact. And my recollection is that uh, I responded to that, that I and the general manager meet every day that I'm in the office, which is probably nine out of 10 days as it is. So um, we know each other well, I guess. So I, I'm I feel like there is there is indeed quite an open door policy there, and there is a lot of free flow of information back and forth. All right, Director Nettishin. I would also like to concur with that as one of the newer members of the board. Um, Matthew has an open door policy. We have a free exchange of information. He is very open to ideas that the board has, um, and re it's reciprocal. The board is open to his ideas. So I feel that we have a very positive working relationship with Mr. Delazansky. So thank you, Matthew. All right, any further discussion or comments from the board? All right, Secretary Rickmeyer, will you please take the roll call vote? Treasurer Borski? Yes. Director Keis? Yes. Director Collins? Yes. Vice President McAdam? Yes. Director Ruff? Yes. President Foster? Yes. Director Nettesheim? Yes. Director Fimmel? Yes. And I vote yes. So with a vote of nine to zero, the motion passes and is adopted, I yeah. guess is what I'm supposed to be saying. Okay, <laughs> that was the second reading, so yes, adopted. All right, um, well, we're, we're getting towards the end here. The next meeting uh, of the, the next meeting will be the exchange meeting on November 11th. Uh, at 9 a.m. here in this auditorium. The next meeting of the Board of Directors will be on November 21st at 9 a.m. again here. Uh, this meeting, by the way, that board meeting is a week earlier on your calendar because of the Thanksgiving holiday, so please uh, make sure you check that. Uh, the next annual meeting will be um, March 11th. Uh, 2025 at 6 p.m. in the Sundial Auditorium. And then I want to take just a second here, uh, and uh, General Manager D. Luzanski mentioned this a, a bit during his comments, but we are going to have a planning session here uh, that will follow the board meeting. Uh, for those who may not be familiar with planning sessions, uh, these are held in accordance with Article 5. Section 5 of our corporate bylaws, the planning sessions are held when there's a need to inform or advise the membership or the board regarding matters that may impact the community. This particular planning session was scheduled so that Triarch, who is the architect engineering firm, 
that is designing the Mountain View project could make their first presentation on the project to the membership. Triarch's presentation today will be focused on the Performing Arts Center and will conclude with their final recommendation for the PAC's location, including their supporting rationale. While the membership is invited to and encouraged to attend the planning session, uh, per the corporate bylaws, this is a presentation just intended to inform the membership and no comments from the members will be taken during that particular session. All right, there being Director Ruff. Uh, I just like to remind everybody that uh, I think it's December 12th is the voting day for the election for the board. December 10th. December 10th, thank you. So please vote, just not often. <laughs> thank you. All right, you're welcome. Um, all right, there being no further business and without objection, the board meeting will be adjourned, but we will reconvene at the bottom of the hour, about 10 minutes, to start our planning session. Thank you. of the Recreation Centers of Sun City Incorporated and is intended for the sole purpose of informing our Recreation Center members. Any duplication, copying, transmission, broadcast or use including electronic and social media is strictly prohibited without the prior written consent from the Recreation Centers of Sun City Incorporated. Thank you for watching.